In this video, we're going to be using the method of undetermined coefficients to find a solution to this second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And if we're going to tackle a problem like this, we always want to do it in a couple of steps. The first thing we're going to do is deal with the left hand side only. So the fact that we have a non-zero value on the right hand side makes this a non-homogeneous differential equation. We're going to ignore that part that makes it non-homogeneous for a second and just pretend that we're dealing with a homogeneous differential equation where this left hand side is equal to zero on the right hand side. So we're going to pretend that this left hand side equals zero and then we're going to turn this differential equation into a single variable function. So what we're going to do is count the number of hash marks on each of these y variables here. So this is the second derivative of y here because there's two hash marks. Because there's two hash marks we're going to call this y double prime r squared. So we replace these two hash marks with the two exponent. Then we're going to have plus two r to the first power because we have one hash mark here and then minus just three because this is going to be r to the zero because there's zero hash marks so r to the zero of course is one one times three is just three so we just get minus three and we're going to set that equal to zero and now we want to factor this to find roots of this equation so what we're going to get is r plus three times r minus one is equal to zero and we can see that we get r is equal to negative three or positive one now what this tells us is that we have distinct real roots and the formula we're going to use for the complementary solution when we have distinct real roots is y sub c of x for the complementary solution is going to be equal to c sub 1 e to the negative 3x so we take one of the roots plus c sub 2 e to the 1x or just e to the x we take the other root. If we have equal real roots or complex conjugate roots, we of course use a different formula for the complementary solution. This is the one we use when we have distinct real roots. So two roots that are both real numbers and are different from one another. So now that we have the complementary solution, we've essentially dealt with the left hand side. Now we need to use the right hand side to find the particular solution. And then once we have the complementary and the particular solutions nailed down, we add them together to find the general solution of this entire second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So to deal with the right hand side to find a particular solution, what we want to do is find a generalized solution that's going to represent this function 1 plus x e to the x. So we're going to say y sub p of x for the particular solution is going to be equal to whenever we have a constant like this, just this one, we're going to replace it with a constant, which in this case we call a. Now this x e to the x here is going to be a little bit more complicated. What we want to do is recognize that we have really two functions multiplied together here. We have the x and we have the e to the x. So we're going to handle these differently. If we want to find a guess for the particular solution for just x, so this x value here, what we would guess is ax plus b. Because we've already used a here, we're going to start with b and we're going to say bx plus c. And the reason that that's our guess for just x is because whenever we have a polynomial function, we always have to include terms of a lesser degree than the value that we're given. So in other words, over on this right hand side here, if we just had x cubed, if the left hand side was just equal to x cubed, and we wanted to find a guess for x cubed, we would say ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d because even though we just have x cubed we have to include all of the terms from the polynomial that are of a lesser degree so not only do we have to include the x cubed but we also have to include x squared x to the first and x to the zero which of course is just our constant here we were given x which is right here so we have to include this cx plus d so our guess for x again is just bx plus c our guess for e to the x would be a e to the x but we've already used a b and c so we're going to say d e to the x is going to be our guess for those so then you might think that our guess for x times e to the x would just be the product of quantity bx plus c and d e to the x that we would just multiply these together which we could do but we're going to end up with a problem here as you'll see so we're going to get quantity bx plus c times d e to the x we just multiply them together but we have too many constants that we're going to have to solve for so what we want to do is simplify this value here we're going to distribute the d e to the x across the bx plus c and we'll get b d x e to the x plus c d e to the x and now what we see here is that we just have essentially two constants bd 
and CD. And because these are going to be constant values, we can multiply them together and just call them B and C. So we simplify that way and we say then that our particular solution, our guess for the particular solution is BX e to the x plus c e to the x. Now at this point we could go forward, but we have one problem we have to deal with before we do. Your guess for the particular solution can't include any terms that are in the same format as any of the terms in the complementary solution. And if you notice here, we have this c sub 2 e to the x, in other words a constant times e to the x, and here we have c e to the x, which is also a constant times e to the x. We can't have that overlapping term, so what we have to do is multiply this particular solution by x. And because this a is by itself representing the 1, we can just multiply this portion of our particular solution by x. So this bx e to the x is just going to become bx squared e to the x, and c e to the x is going to become cx e to the x. And now we don't have any overlapping terms because this is a constant times e to the x. This is a constant times x times e to the x, which is fundamentally different. Now with this guess for the particular solution in mind, what we want to do is find the first and second derivatives of our particular solution. So y sub p prime of x, the derivative, we're going to take the derivative of our particular solution, and then we'll take the second derivative of the particular solution. And the reason is because we're going to plug y sub p of x here in for y, we're going to plug y prime sub p of x in for y prime, and then the second derivative we find we're going to plug in for y double prime, and that should allow us to solve for our constants a, b, and c. So taking the derivative of the particular solution, the derivative of a is just 0 because a is a constant. The derivative of bx squared e to the x, we're going to need to use product rule. So when we use product rule, we'll say that bx squared is one function and that e to the x is another function. So taking the derivative of bx squared, we get 2bx, and then we multiply by e to the x and then add to that the reverse situation where we leave bx squared as it is, and we multiply by the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. Now to take the derivative of cx e to the x, again we have a product rule situation. We'll deal with cx separately from e to the x. So for product rule here, we'll take the derivative of cx, which is just c, and then multiply that by e to the x, and then add to that cx when we leave that alone multiplied by the derivative of e to the x which is just e to the x. Now we want to find the second derivative of the particular solution so y double prime sub p of x is going to be here. Again product rule so we'll say the derivative of 2bx is just 2b and then we multiply by e to the x and then add to that the opposite situation where we leave 2bx alone so 2bx and multiply by the derivative of e to the x which is just e to the x. Here for bx squared e to the x, remember we already took the derivative of that, we had that here, and the derivative was these first two terms in our first derivative, so we know that the derivative will be 2bx e to the x plus bx squared e to the x. Now we're on to c e to the x, we know the derivative of that is still just c e to the x. And the derivative of cx e to the x we found here, we know it's these last two terms, so we get plus c e to the x plus cx e to the x. Now from here we want to simplify if we can. Notice that we have 2bx e to the x and 2bx e to the x, so we can combine those and call it 4bx e to the x, so we'll say here 4bx e to the x, and over here we have c e to the x and c e to the x. We can combine those and we'll get 2 c e to the x, and this is our simplified second derivative of the particular solution. Now we want to go ahead and plug into our original second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And remember we're going to be plugging this in here, so we're going to be plugging these in for these values up here. Plugging in the second derivative for y double prime, we're going to get 2b e to the x plus 4bx e to the x plus bx squared e to the x plus 2c e to the x plus cx e to the x. Here we have 2 times the first derivative, so we're going to say plus 2 
times the first derivative, which we have here, 2bx e to the x, so 2bx e to the x, plus bx squared e to the x, plus c e to the x, plus cx e to the x. And then here we have minus 3 times the particular solution, so minus 3 times, and here we have a plus bx squared e to the x, plus cx e to the x. And that's all going to be equal to our original right-hand side, 1 plus x e to the x. So now we want to go ahead and simplify the left-hand side as much as we can. If we distribute this 2 here, we're going to get 4, we're going to get 2, 2, and 2. Here, if we distribute our negative 3, we're going to get minus 3b x squared e to the x and a minus 3cx e to the x. So now we want to look to see if we can combine some terms. We know that this negative 3a is by itself because there's no other terms involving an a, so we can go ahead and write that, negative 3a, and that'll take care of this here. We have a plus 4bx e to the x and a plus 4bx e to the x, so that's going to give us a plus 8bx e to the x. We have a plus 2b e to the x, so plus 2b e to the x, and we have a plus 2c e to the x plus 2c e to the x is plus 4c e to the x, and everything else will cancel because we have a plus bx squared e to the x plus 2bx squared e to the x is plus 3bx squared e to the x, but then we have minus 3bx squared e to the x down here, so that'll be zero. Then we have a plus cx e to the x, and a plus 2cx e to the x is a total of 3cx e to the x, and then here we have a minus 3cx e to the x, so again, zero. So we've taken care of everything on the left-hand side, and this, of course, is going to be equal to 1 plus x e to the x. So now we can do one more simplification step. Our negative 3a is our only constant. That's going to stay by itself, so negative 3a. We have 8bx e to the x, that can't be simplified, but here we have 2b times e to the x, and we have 4c times e to the x. So we can factor out an e to the x and say plus quantity 2b plus 4c times e to the x is equal to 1 plus x e to the x. And now we can equate coefficients on the left and right hand side. So we have this negative 3a on the left, which is a constant, equal to the constant on the right hand side, 1, so we're going to say negative 3a is equal to 1. On the right hand side here we have essentially 1x e to the x and over here we have 8b x e to the x. So this 8b is going to be equal to the 1 over here on the right so we're going to say 8b is equal to 1. And then because there's no standalone e to the x term on the right we're going to say 2b plus 4c is equal to 0. Now we need to use these three equations as a system of linear equations to solve for our constants a, b, and c. So if we look at this first one here, negative 3a is equal to 1. If we divide both sides by negative 3, we get a is equal to negative 1 third. For b, if we divide both sides of this equation by 8, we get b is equal to positive 1 eighth. And then if we plug our value for b into this equation here, we're going to get 2 times 1 eighth, 2 times 1 eighth is 1 fourth, so we'll get 1 fourth plus 4c is equal to 0. Subtracting 1 fourth from both sides, we get 4c equals negative 1 fourth. Dividing both sides by 4, we get c equals negative 1 over 16. Now with a value for all three constants, we can go ahead and take our value for a and plug it into our particular solution for a. We can take our value for b and plug it into the particular solution for b, and then the value for c here, negative 1 16th, and plug it in here for c, and we'll have our final answer for the particular solution. But of course we're interested in the general solution to the original problem, and the general solution is always the complementary solution plus the particular solution. So what we're going to do is say y of x, the general solution, is going to be equal to our complementary solution, so c sub 1 e to the negative 3x plus c sub 2 e to the x, and then from here we're going to add the particular solution. So plugging in negative 1 third for a, we're going to start out with a minus 1 third. Plugging in 1 eighth for b, we're going to say plus 1 eighth, 
x squared e to the x, and then plugging in negative 1 16th for c, we're going to say minus 1 16th x e to the x. And since we solved for the constants in our particular solution, and then we were able to add the complementary and particular solutions together, this is our final answer for the general solution.